Welcome to the wide, wide world of study aids. We are Team 4, and we will be guiding you through the dangerous forest that is the ideas and values of King Richard III. Our first value that we will discuss is conscience. The value conscience is defined as a person's moral sense of right and wrong, viewed as acting as a guide to one's behaviour. This value is central to all characters in the play, whether they are high up in society or an everyday man, as it gives them an innate sense of what is right and wrong, especially in relation to their actions and motives. A motive of dreams is also evident throughout the play, and they generally play a, the role of foreshadowing events that are, are eventually going to happen. This is because the Elizabethans strongly believed in superstition and faith. However, in Richard's case, his dreams and nightmares in which his conscience manifests. In Act 1, Scene 4, conscience is evident in the dialogue between the first and second murderer when they have been given the task of killing Clarence. The second murderer says, Some certain dregs of conscience are yet within me. And the first murderer replies, Remember our reward when the deeds are done. And the second murderer says, Come, he dies, I had forgot the reward. And the first murderer replies, Where's thy conscience now? The first murderer then goes on to say, Tis even now at my elbow, persuading me not to kill the duke. Yet the first murderer goes on to kill the duke, displaying that although conscience is present, it doesn't necessarily mean the character will listen to it. In Act 5, five Scene 3, Richard has a nightmare the night before Bosworth and awakes in terror, tormented by his conscience. In his nightmare, all the people he has killed pervade his mind and come back to haunt him and make him feel guilty in an attempt to make him acquire a conscience. Think how those stabbers me in my prime of youth. And then the re repetition of despair and die all throughout emphasise the despair they want him to feel, even to the point where he doesn't want to live any longer. Later on, in Act 5, Scene 3, Richard goes on in a soliloquy to say, Give me another horse, bind me... Bind up my wounds, have mercy, Jesus, soft, but I did but dream. O oh, coward conscience, how does the afflict me? As he starts to feel guilt, but instantly realises that it is just his conscience torturing him, and he takes back what he has said as he is arguing with his conscience. And further on in the soliloquy, he states that my conscience has a thousand several tongues, and every tongue brings in a tale, and every tale condemns me for a villain. However, it is obvious that he refuses to listen to all the signs of his conscience when he says further on in the scene to his army, let not our babbling dreams affright our souls, for conscience is a word that cowards use. Our strong arms be conscience, swords our law. A few more values discussed in the play is free will and providentialism. The conflict and contrast between these values in the play acts as a theme being displayed in every character. For example, Richard always trying to get ahead where, himself where other characters leave their fate to God. This is illustrated in Act 1, Scene 4, in the tower where Clarence is pleading with the two murderers not to kill him. Clarence says, Erroneous vassals, the great king of kings, hath in the table of his law commanded that thou shalt not murder. By alerting the murderers of their crime by breaking a commandment, Clarence hopes that they will not go th through with the kill. This symbolises the contextual value of God and religion as Clarence believes God will appeal to the everyday man, the murderers. In Act 2, Scene 1, Shakespeare illustrates the Elizabethans' vengeful society through Elizabeth's child. The boy says, God will revenge it, whom I will importune, with earnest prayers all to that effect. The child will pray to God for revenge. This shows the boy's faith in God to change the murderer's destiny. This portrays their society's strong faith in God as young children are faithful as well, not only adults. In Act 2, Scene 4, the citizens on the street gives the audience an insight into the thoughts of the everyday man. The citizens argue and discuss the happenings of the royals and their opinions. The third citizen says, The water swell before the boisterous storm, but leave it all to God, wither away. This exhibits the third citizen's faith and confidence in God to sort out the incoming storm. This storm, re this storm refers to the chaos occurring between the York family caused by Richard. The citizens leaving their fate to God contrast against Richard's attitude. 
After Richard's defeat in Act 5, Scene 3, Richmond rec reflects on the battle, one that hath ever been in God's enemy. Then if you fight against God's enemy, God will in justice ward you as his soldiers. Richard references God as the ultimate protector, therefore being on God's side is valuable to the people of Shakespeare. The role of women is also a central theme to the play with four strong female characters. Shakespeare illustrates how deeply disturbed Richard is in Act 4, Scene 4, where he argues with Elizabeth, trying to suggest him and her daughter marry. Elizabeth, yet thou didst kill my children, Richard, but in your daughter's womb I bury them, where in that rest of spicery they will breed, selves of themselves. Richard suggests impregnating Elizabeth's daughter and delivering her with grandchildren will be some sort of consolidation for the loss of her two sons and, and husband. This demonstrates Richard's lack of respect for women as birthing children is their only purpose. In Act 2, Scene 2, Elizabeth claims, I am not barren to bring forth complaints. Elizabeth states how she is essentially full of complaints in the scene where she is mourning with Rivers and Dorset. Elizabeth is portrayed as a strong female character throughout the majority of the play, yet Shakespeare also gives her a sense of weakness displayed in this quote. This makes Elizabeth a more likeable character as she is not only strong, yet not emotion emotionless. In Act 4, Scene 2, we witness Richard's first manipulative move towards the crown as he woos Lady Anne. Richard, was ever, a, was ever woman in this humour wooed? Was ever woman in this humour won? I'll have her, but I won't keep her long. Richard is boasting to himself about wooing Lady Anne when he has just killed her husband and father. He mocks Anne and females as they are so easy to get, and then treating her like rubbish as he intends to throw her away when he is finished with her. This presents Richard as almost a soulless character with no feelings of empathy or honesty, though still likeable through his char charismatic charm and communication with the audience as his confidant. The inequality of the two sexes is also very prominent in this quote, as Richards does not value Anne in the slightest as a female.